how coronavirus kills. Have you ever wondered how something so small can cause so much damage? Well, in this video, I'm going to explain one way coronavirus kills human beings. In particular, I'm going to explain the process of a cytokine storm. SARS-CoV-2 enters the alveolar in the lungs. SARS-CoV-2 is the official name for the COVID-19 virus. It stands for severe, which means something very bad, acute, which means it rapidly progresses and sometimes needs urgent care, respiratory, which is anything to do with breathing and syndrome, which means a combination of symptoms associated with each other. In this case, the virus. COV-2 stands for coronavirus, which is the family of viruses that this comes from, and the two indicates that this is the second incarnation of SARS the world has seen. Alveola are the microscopic air sacs in the lungs that take up oxygen and pass it into your blood cells, which go on to deliver it around your body. Your body needs oxygen to survive. The problem is, it means inhaling all sorts of nasty things in the air around us. However, the body does have defences against these things in our noses and throats, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to talk about the defence mechanisms in the lungs. The first line of defence is called the alveolar macrophage. You could call it the front line of defence, so go ahead and give them a clap if you like. They are a type of phagocyte, which means that they eat cells. They secrete oxygen, metabolites, which signal whether the cell is good or bad. And then if it's a bacteria, they secrete lysozyme to destroy its cell walls, then antimicrobial peptides, which are proteins let out to actively kill the virus, then proteases break down the proteins of the virus further into polypeptides or amino acids. This process is known as phagocytosis and is similar to how you digest your food. But the alveolar macrophages can also send a message through peptides to activate T cells. T cells then divide rapidly and produce cytokines, which tell other cells to do things too. Cytokines can initiate inflammatory responses. A cytokine is just an SOS message in a bottle. It will not kill you directly, but you can be killed by the cells performing the message set out in the cytokines. Without cytokines, there would be no message to send to the cells to defend the body and a virus would overwhelm the cells in our body very quickly, killing each of our cells as it reproduces. But why a message in a bottle? Wouldn't it be better to have a targeted telephone call? Well, because the body is more of a sponge, dense of quickly circulating fluids, Chemical substances struggle to spread through these fluids and may not travel fast enough and often they are not addressed to a single central command but to all the surrounding tissues. So in other words this is like a big alarm or a big SOS at sea. This message in a bottle is written by the micro soldiers who are the front line fighting any kind of perceived threat to your body and health and the content is Please, we need more soldiers and more weapons. Famous cytokines include IL-6, which initiates an inflammatory response, IL-1, which also creates inflammation, but also promotes fever, and IFN gamma-32 also signals other cells to inflame. Then the body really puts every step into making sure the virus dies and can't go any further. The membrane of the alveola, called the hyaline membrane, inflates as told to from the cytokines, meaning it can no longer transport oxygen into the bloodstream, which in a Trump-like way is a good thing for building a wall or a defence against a foreign enemy, but if you're trying to get oxygen into the body, then it's a very bad thing. The body produces many types of white blood cell, whose purpose is to be the soldier to fight the disease. Neutrophil, 
directs chemicals which help to destroy the virus or stop it from reproducing to where they need to go to. And a monocyte cell produces even more message carrying cytokines as well as carrying out phagocytosis or as we know it, eating the virus itself. The body also produces many more fibroblast cells which synthesize collagen to help repair the cell structures. Your body will react and send more white blood cells where they are needed, but often also elsewhere as an extra defense. The storm is an out of control reaction of increasing number of such messages caused by the cytokines and following soldiers caused by the white blood cells and weapons caused by the chemicals. Such event may accompany your death for three reasons, and it may be difficult to understand what exactly has happened. It could be that the threat is already too much for you, so the virus is already in lots of places and in big numbers in the body. So you will increase and increase and increase your defences and messages to have new ones, but this will be useless, like trying to repair the Titanic once it's already halfway sunk. It could be that the frontline soldiers, those white blood cells I mentioned, have gone out of control and have begun creating themselves much more damage than the threat of the virus itself. This damage leads to the dangerously ambiguous message in a bottle that we are overcome and need more soldiers and weapons sent through the cytokines. And then when this message is sent, the new white blood cells begin participating and chemicals to what has become not war, but a mutiny or a civil war. And this increases damages and more SOS messages are sent and more soldiers and weapons are sent to participate and so on and so on. The key magic words in textbooks are overdriven immune reaction and positive feedback. It's kind of like nuking Chernobyl after the reactor has already exploded because the cytokines, those communist cytokines are giving the wrong information to the white blood cells and telling them they need more defenses rather than less defenses because basically the body knows that there's a problem but he doesn't know what the response to that problem should be. Finally it could be that some mechanism that multiplies messages along the way has become excessive. Whoever receives a message sends many more messages around And this leads to an overcrowding of soldiers or white blood cells that in these cases tend often to start attacking the tissues themselves instead of the proper enemies and so we're back to the last situation. The mechanism that self multiplies messages is a natural one needed to face those situations where you're on the brink of situation one and you need the body response to increase more quickly than the threat as it is in real life with our information and response to the virus. But once this process is activated, the counter mechanisms that should stop its excess, its overreaction, sometimes and for some reason are suppressed. So in addition, still for some reason we don't really know why, this overreaction may be activated by the body overestimating the load of the external threat. For some reason, the reasons could be many, specific to the threat or specific to an individual's personal health status. This is like the fake news that is spread throughout your body and something about this virus in particular causes at least one or all three of these situations to occur in your body and we don't yet know why. More common sense suggests that the borders between the before described situations may be more grey For example, situation 1 may trigger 2 and 3, or situation 2 may open a door to external threats that lead to 1. In general, to use a metaphor, nobody has ever been able to fight for defending his home without also contributing to damaging it to some extent. This makes it difficult to establish who was the cause of what. All this cell activity takes more energy and oxygen from the patient and if there's too little oxygen and energy to repair cells in the body, organs fail and the person dies. The damage to the lungs and inflammation can also cause what's called ARDS or Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome 
which is a collection of symptoms such as shortness of breath, rapid breathing or bluey skin, the damage from which can sometimes affect you for life. Sepsis is also another potentially life-threatening condition caused by the body's response to an infection. The body normally releases chemicals into the bloodstream to fight an infection. Sepsis occurs when the body's response to these chemicals is out of balance, triggering changes that can damage multiple organ systems. Septic shock is a severe and potentially fatal condition that occurs when sepsis leads to life-threateningly low blood pressure. And low blood pressure is harmful because the brain will fail to receive enough blood and therefore enough oxygen and nutrients to survive. Sepsis can also cause what's called DIC or disseminated, which means having spread throughout an organ or the body, intravascular in the blood system, coagulation, changing from a liquid to a solid. In other words, the overreaction from the body produces chemicals that solidify the blood and can cause a blood clot which has caused some strokes. Coronavirus can also weaken the blood vessels and cause them to leak blood into the lungs causing the patient to drown. It can also cause kidney failure. It's worth remembering that only a small fraction of those who get COVID-19 will experience these symptoms. This suggests that cytokine storms, septic shocks, and all the rest of the dictionary that we've just talked about are actually rare phenomenon. Because we know this virus affects mostly the elderly or those with underlying health conditions, there is a school of thought which suggests the reason behind excessive immune responses is because sicker people already have the white blood cells in alarm mode, as if the body when most under threat acts like the country when we raise the terrorism threat level. It doesn't mean immune deficiency, sick people can't get even more ill as a direct result of the virus, a bit like how raising the terrorism threat level doesn't mean terrorists can't attack, but it does help the white blood cells prepare and keep the body alive. Now because they're always on edge, they might overreact to a virus like COVID-19. Another school of thought thinks that if you have a condition like diabetes, chemicals which exchange messages throughout the body are already compromised and therefore this may affect the steps of a cytokine storm leading to an uncontrolled immune reaction. The steps leading to what has happened are specific. Nobody believes that a standard chain of events explains what we are seeing in these days pathways are clearly many and the explanation I've given massively oversimplifies the process. The cytokine storm is one of the visible expressions of an immune reaction that ends up being the specific cause of the final failure of some organs. It is difficult to establish at which extent this reaction was really excessive because sometimes a suicide mission is the only way to give you a few chances of saving yourself. But do you agree with me? Join in the debate below and subscribe.